Hi there, my name is Richard Pearson. I'm the Chief Innovator at Curtis Fusioneering Limited and my talk today is on Curtis Fusioneering's Scylla self-cooled lithium lead advanced blanket for commercial fusion reactors. So the contents today, I'm going to take you quickly through a Kyoto Fusioneering company overview and then we're going to talk about self-cooled lithium lead breeding blankets, uh, short history. Give you the kind of concept overview of the Scylla blanket and the status of relevant R&D, particularly silicon carbide and lithium lead. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our development program going forwards and then summary and conclusions. So a company overview. Uh, founded in 2019 in Kyoto, Japan, and we spun out from Kyoto University. We have an exclusive partnership agreement with them. We're privately funded, uh, private equity money, uh, totaling 3.3 million as of this year. We have new investment and government grants to be announced early next year. Watch this space. Um, we're rapidly expanding at the moment and currently recruiting, and we have 30 employees with a blend of technical and business personnel. Uh, remember the FIA, Fusion Industry Association, uh, we recently launched a UK subsidiary and we're working with both UK government, Japanese government and private sector. Our mission statement is to develop, the, accelerate the development of high performance, commercially viable reactor technologies associated with power generation and the fuel cycle for the rapid expansion of the budding fusion industry. So, on to self-cooled blankets. The definition of a self-cooled tritium breeding blanket is a blanket that uses a liquid, either a metal or a salt, for both cooling and tritium breeding, avoiding the need for an additional coolant, e.g. helium or perhaps water. So in a British history of self-cooled blankets is that they were actually considered first in the 1980s and typically would use lithium lead, pure lithium and molten salts uh, for, for tritium breeding and for multiplication and for cooling. Uh, the reason these designs were, were looked at is because they're uh, commercially attractive and potentially very high performance, particularly compared with the current ETA designs, which are relatively low performance, operate with a sort of maximum temperature around 500 degrees Celsius um, versus basically temperatures that can go above uh, 700 degrees Celsius, have simpler configurations with no separate cooling. Um, due to the need for novel materials at the time when they were first considered in the 80s, they were only considered as an attractive future option. Um, key enabling technology in this regard was silicon carbide uh, and silicon carbide composites, which were first considered for fusion in the 70s and then again for blankets in the 1980s. But again, uh, these weren't really considered until later. So in the late 90s and early noughties, uh, in particular in Europe, US and in, also in Japan, um, several self-cooled lithium lead designs as well as some self-cooled lithium and self-cooled fly designs uh, were developed. In particular, Tauro, which is shown in the top right hand corner here, and the Ares AT design, which is part of an Ares program that ran, uh, is still running now, uh, I believe, in, in the bottom right hand corner. Um, since that time, as I mentioned, Ares has sort of developed, and actually, many studies have looked at various aspects of the design viability as well as identifying remaining gaps. And in parallel, significant progress on aspects of lithium lead, um, including with silicon carbide composite, have been have been made. Um, further, advanced in silicon carbide composite as well have been made, but not in the fusion space necessarily, although it has been developed in fusion too uh, for PWR, accident tolerant fuels, and also the aerospace industry. So many key challenges have been significantly developed, but it is still considered as a future option, this silicon carbide uh, composite lithium lead design. So so why, why is that? Well, we want to challenge that. Um, the breeding blanket is, as people here will know, a key system for commercially viable fusion reactors. It has a hugely strong influence on performance, cost, lifetime, waste, and often operational reliability. All blanket concepts face development challenges. There is no miracle option here in the blanket space, but for fusion to be a transformative energy source, the current designs that are being developed are not advanced enough, in our opinion. A revivified public and private program will see commercial uh, prototypes constructed in the next five to 15 years. So the time for developing an advanced blanket is now, it is not post ETA. So with that in mind, Kyoto Fusioneering is pursuing accelerated development of the silicon carbide composite lithium lead as an optimal blanket solution. I'll take you through the Scylla concept overview. So Scylla is, is Kyoto Fusioneering's blanket design. It uses silicon carbide composite as a structural material and we're developing a fusion specific grade um, with Kyoto University. It uses a lithium lead eutectic um, as a breeder multiplier and coolant as discussed. Um, and it uses a tungsten thin layer first wall. Uh, design options are also beryllium or a plumbite booster layer to increase neutron yield and also a graphite reflector for the same reason. So that would work to increase the CBR, which I'll come to in a second. Um, you can't see it because it's behind me at the moment, but uh, the, the, the blanket is, a, is an, um, an acronym and it stands for self-called Yurio Lithium Lead Advanced Blanket, where Yurio means superior in Japanese. So Scylla has the potential for high performance, uh, can operate at high temperature over, over 900 degrees Celsius, 
meaning high thermodynamic efficiency. Looking at the, uh, the graph on your right, you can see that we can enter into the Brayton, Brayton cycle <coughs> regime. Uh, silicon carbide has extraordinary neutron damage tolerance at high temperature, um, and lithium lead being a liquid can also operate at high temperature and also is a reasonably good uh, heat and tritium uh, carrier and extraction of tritium is also okay. Strong neutronic properties, uh, high, B, high TBR in particular because you've got a high breeder to structure ratio and no parasitic absorption losses from coolant channels, for example, for pressurized helium, as with other blankets. And using a tungsten first wall is beneficial because it has a similar thermal expansion to silicon carbide and also high temperature neut neutron irradiation resistance in the range of uh, operating temperature. Uh, low MHG effect because it's a non-metallic silicon carbide composite structure and as I've discussed no separate cooling required means that uh, reducing the power consumption compared with helium cooled and water cooled designs. Further it has potential for low cost, um, the substrates are abundant and cheap, the manufacturer is the main challenge at the moment. Um, potential for low radiotoxicity at the end of life, um, carbon-14 is a potential issue as is uh, waste from tungsten first wall but these are under study. Um, has strong operability characteristics. <clears throat> it's drainable for, for easy maintenance. Um, you can service online with lithium-6 six, six enrichment, purification, tritium extraction, all happening online. And it has a low density structure which eases remote handling. Intrinsic safety is also a characteristic because there is no pressurized media which reduces the risk of cracking, noting we're using a silicon carbide composite um, and a low risk from an accident scenario. Uh, a plot of the specific activity of different blanket materials uh, these are the four primary materials being considered for blankets uh, on your right hand side. So initial um, design studies for Scylla show that tritium reading ratio, which has been done with MCMP, um, show for a high TBR and lower enrichment than typical uh, lithium lead blankets, which typically need between 60 and 90% um, lithium-6. A TBR of 1.2 does appear to be possible with natural lithium with a small reflector and multiplier layer. And neutronics calculations, we believe, have a lower error margin for the Scylla concept inherently because the blanket has a simpler um, configuration. So initial conclusions from the study um, are that a range of variants can achieve a TBR of 1.2. With a standard configuration, you need about 40 to 60 percent lithium-6 enrichment. With a graphite reflector, this can be reduced to 20 to 30 percent. And with a booster layer, this could actually be used uh, potentially with natural lithium, which is a huge benefit. So the status of Scylla relevant r and I'm going to go through some of the technical activities that have been going on in the last 20 years uh, that provide the rationale for why Scylla is a good idea now. <clears throat> Nuclear grade silicon carbide composite has remarkable properties under neutron radiation. Um, it doesn't swell after about 1 dPa and also uh, the strength of the material does not degrade significantly. Um, in particular at high temperature actually has remarkable high temperature tolerance. The graph behind my uh, behind my face here shows also the torsional strength under neutron radiation is also remains strong. Uh, silicon carbide has strong thermal conductivity, but actually it does drop significantly after a radiation of a few dPa. That is a, that is a key issue that needs to be resolved. However, it does not affect the heat exchanger, which is the critical part of the um, the system to exchange the heat from the flowing liquid lithium lead. Tritium permeation through silicon carbide is four orders of magnitude better um, than stainless steel at 550 degrees Celsius. Um, and at 950 degrees Celsius, which is the Scylla operating um, range, it is, it is about the same as steel. So again, in a reasonably good range as regards tritium permeation, which is typically quite bad with steels at higher temperatures. Um, production of carbon-14 from the nitrogen and silicon carbide is an issue and could give rise to large quantities of, uh, of carbon-14. That is an issue under consideration. Compatibility with tungsten, um, as I said earlier, to protect silicon carbide from sputtering and plasma disruption, it is necessary to have a tungsten first wall, probably. Um, we're looking into the option of, of combining it with silicon carbide, including possibly a tungsten reinforced silicon carbide. It does appear to have strong compatibility, in particular because of the similar thermal, uh, similar thermal expansion rates and stability under neutron radiation. On to manufacturing. New novel silicon carbide composite manufacturing methods are under development in collaboration with Kyoto University, um, including joining by liquid phase sintering under high pressure um, or joining more complex shapes using a new process, uh, also under development at Kyoto University, using pre preg sheets, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, and also there is uh, experimentation on uh, joining via silicon carbide powder reaction sintering. Here's some diagrams. On the top right hand side you can see an early stage testing of a Scylla like structure at Kyoto University um, which uses the prepreg sheet wrapping on a graphite structure and then sintering. At uh, the bottom right hand side you have uh, a, a reaction sintered uh, silicon carbide on a joint and on the left, uh, at bottom left, there are some screw joints shown as well uh, and how that works. 
silicon carbide composite um, corrosion studies with lithium lead. So this has been tested at Kyoto University several years ago uh, with some ongoing testing, and it was test uh, lithium lead was tested with silicon carbide in flowing lithium lead conditions at 900 degrees Celsius for 3,000 hours. Um, stainless steel and F82H raffam steel were also tested, and there's a diagram here in the, the right hand side that can show you the results of those and, and links to the study. The conclusions were no significant corrosion of silicon carbide composite, um, mechanical properties were largely unchanged and, unchanged, and that suggests that corrosion resistant coating will not be required for silicon carbide in lithium lead. Furthermore, um, silicon carbide has been tested in Kyoto University's uh, lithium lead and helium loop with a heat exchanger to test heat transfer across silicon carbide composite from lithium lead to helium as a secondary coolant. Uh, the heat transfer increases with temperature as shown in the graph behind me here. Um, and the rate limiting factor is actually the helium heat transfer in the secondary loop um, rather than the lithium lead itself. This is, uh, and, and furthermore, uh, a silicon carbide heat exchanger has been designed with a helium gas turbine for high energy, uh, high efficiency energy production. Uh, the top graph in the right hand corner, by the way, shows the, the, the temperature of the loop operating at over 900 degrees Celsius for several hours. Tritium extraction from lithium lead, uh, vacuum sieve tray technology, also developed at Kyoto University, uses uh, a, a, a series of sieves um, with lithium droplets passed through multiple nozzles and in free fall, tritium is released from those droplets and recovered by vacuum pumping. Um, we are currently supporting the development of an upscaled version of this vacuum sieve tray technology at Oroshi um, 2 lithium lead loop at NIFS in Japan. A relatively low tritium recovery ratio is actually acceptable and it depends on the tritium contamination in the secondary loop which is actually driven by the safety requirements um, but 35% um, with a 45% achievable target um, is, is possible. Okay so finally on to our development program. So Kyoto Fusioneering has embarked on a SILA focused experimental R&D program. Fundamentally, this follows three areas. This is silicon carbide composite development, lithium lead silicon carbide compatibility, and lithium lead as a breeder coolant. I'm not gonna list all of the key uh, challenges within here, but we've tried to be holistic in our approach, and we are testing these in parallel streams, some of them in development with Kyoto University, others in development with Japanese industry and Kyoto University. So running you through some of the composite development ones, we have non no novel manufacturing processes, which I showed you pictures of earlier, um, neutron transport studies for benchmarking irradiation data, including from Oak Ridge National Lab, for example, thermomechanical testing, um, and also integration with tungsten, as I described. Lithium lead silicon carbide composite compatibility testing includes further corrosion studies, including on the Hiroshi loop, uh, in the, not on the Hiroshi loop, sorry, uh, um, in, the, in the loop at Kyoto University, tritium permeability, and, and flow as well. Tritium transport for the lithium breeder, um, tritium extraction using the, uh, the vacuum sieve, and that is at Hiroshi loop. Um, and first wall heat removal, CFD analysis, eutectic mixing for homogeneous compositions, eutectic pumping and isotopic separation in um, lead to remove impurities. Alongside the technical experimental activities, we also have uh, design activities underway. We're advancing foundational knowledge from Kyoto University and other previous works, exploring the three levers uh, of lithium-6 enrichment, lithium uh, lead composition change, potentially moving away from a lithium uh, PB of uh, PB83 lithium-17 mix shown on the graph on the right hand side is our initial studies of the impact on TBR of changing the composition of lithium lead um, at the expense of changing the uh, melting temperature of, of, of the lithium lead eutectic and finally the impact of a booster layer or a reflector layer um, those, all, those are all to understand TBR and how we might increase it Thermical, thermomechanical modeling, including heat, new heat exchanger design. Commercial aspects, including manufacturing, maintenance, power cycle engineering, and integration with balanced plant systems. Um, involvement also, <coughs> Kyoto Fusioneering is also involved with silicon carbide composite qualification um, with an ASME design group. And I wanted to also make the note that calculating accurate TBR is in fact design specific, but Kyoto Fusioneering will adapt to any reactor configuration. Finally, um, all of this culminates in a facility for an integrated SILA blanket testing in a proxy non-nuclear environment. This has been designed and will be commissioned in 2023. Um, in the meantime, we are using our existing university loop at Kyoto University, uh, sorry, lithium lead loop at Kyoto University for R&D. This Kyoto Fusioneering loop will advance experimental R&D and design studies on parallel tracks. We're operating on an agile, fail fast, forward philosophy. So build, test, learn, repeat. Ultimately, the facility will allow for integrated demonstration of all the parallel streams of the slide I showed earlier with the technical challenges of silicon carbide composite development, lithium lead development, and so on. 
Um, behind me here is a schematic of, of the uh, integrated Scylla test facility and above is a picture of the uh, current picture uh, taken actually just last night um, at the lithium lead loop and compact intermediate heat exchanges from Kyoto to University. So to summarize, Kyoto Fusion Engineering is developing a commercially attractive breeding blanket called Scylla and we believe this is the best option for uh, commercial fusion power plants. Results from TBR study and design optionality have been presented. The status of silicon carbide as a key enabling technology, as well as silica relevant um, lithium lead R&D has been assessed. Challenges remain, but there are no showstoppers. The development program has been kicked off at Kyoto Engineering to resolve the issues on parallel tracks. Advanced design studies focused on TBR, commercial aspects, maintenance, etc. are underway, alongside experimental R&D um, with lithium lead silicon carbide uh, studies. And of course, the manufacture of that novel grade of silicon carbide composite is also underway in collaboration with Kyoto University and Japanese industry. All of these parallel tracks of R&D and design studies will be um, come together in our integrated blanket design test facility for fusion relevant testing of Scylla. And we are going to be ready for design into fusion for design with fusion energy demonstrators pre-2030. And I'm apologies that you can't see that behind me there. Um, yes. Thank you. And our contact users are here. I'll happily answer any questions. Thank you very much.